Welcome to the InnovaBuzz podcast, where we share all kinds of tips, advice, and interview guests on all things innovation and leadership in modern marketing. Each episode is a conversation with inspiring people who make wonderful contributions to our knowledge in these areas and spark curiosity and ideas to pursue. Join me, Jürgen Strauss from InnovaBiz, and let's get into today's masterclass on this InnovaBuzz podcast. You don't have to worry about innovating because every person has such a unique way of looking at things. When a person comes out with a podcast, their style is so unique. I haven't heard two podcasters the same way yet. They're all different. They all have their own little style because that's the way they like to do it. So I believe, again, Tony's theory, that innovation automatically is there because you're going along with something you like, with something you love, and you're going to share that with the world the way you like, the way you love. And you can call it innovation, but you're going to wind up being different and and standing up, standing apart, standing out from the rest because of your unique point of view. Hi there, Innovator. It's great to be back with another episode. I hope you've had an awesome week so far. And I hope you enjoyed my recent conversations with Christina Nicholson of Media Mavens, and with John Bellamy from Direct Messaging. Today, I'm really excited to have on the Innova Buzz podcast as my guest, Tony Dierso. Tony's host of the Tony Dierso Show on the Voice America Influencers channel. He's also a speaker, an author, and a marketing expert. Tony has written books, including Elite Entrepreneurs and The Vision Map, which you can get an electronic copy of from this podcast. And he's also recently partnered with two magazines called Influential People and International Fashion Magazine. His show has more than 60,000 downloads per weekly episode. And he told me he's aiming for 100,000 by the end of this year. So I'm really looking forward to talking to Tony on this episode. A quick promotional message from our sponsor. That's me, or more accurately, my business in Overbiz. We help coaches and consultants build professional credibility, engage their target audience, and connect with their ideal clients. The result is that their ideal clients virtually self-select and line up to work with them. To help you get clarity about who your ideal client is, and how you can build a strong, enduring relationship with them, take a look at our Marketing Master Mini Class. Now, the Marketing Master Mini Class is free. It's just two modules and will take you less than 30 minutes to work through and give you clarity on your ideal client and how you can communicate with them to build and strengthen an engaging, enduring relationship. You can even use the exercise to define your ideal audience for a podcast, a speech, or a presentation. Access the Marketing Master Mini class at innovabiz.co forward slash marketing master. As I said, it's completely free, and you can even access it without giving me your email. In our discussion today, Tony talked to me about podcast marketing and how to grow your podcast audience. He shared some tips to profit from your podcast, and some of those are actually not that obvious. And he shared his vision mapping process, a powerful tool to achieve what you want. Without further ado then, let's fly into the hive and get the buzz from Tony Dierso. Hi, I'm your host, Jürgen Strauss from InnovaBiz, and I'm really excited to welcome to the InnovaBuzz podcast today from around Los Angeles in California, USA, Tony Dierso, who is a radio host, a speaker, an author, a marketing expert. He's host of the Tony Dierso Show on the Voice of America Influencers channel. 
Welcome to the podcast, Tony. It's a real privilege to have you as my guest. Jürgen, thank you so much for having me on Innova Buzz. It is my honor and privilege to be here on your show. It's a great show. You have amazing guests, and I am honored to be associated among them. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you, Neil. Uh, Neil. I said Neil because I was going to say one of our amazing guests, Neil, Tony, Neil Sperling, was our guest on episode 200, and he suggested that we interview you, Tony, on the Innova Buzz podcast. So big hello out to Neil as well. Neil, thank you so much for connecting me with Jurgen. You are a star and a world-class connector. And for anyone in the audience, if you haven't listened to Neil's show, check it out. It is amazing. This guy knows his stuff. Yeah, he certainly does. Now, Tony, your show, The Tony D'Urso Show, gets 60,000 downloads, I think, at last count per weekly episode. And you've reached over 4 million downloads to date, which is quite amazing. You're the number one show on Voice of or is it Voice America Influencers Channel, and you have been for some time, even with the precursor show. And you've used your experience in lead generation and marketing to grow that show to where it is today so i'm really looking forward to digging into that some more and learning how you did that Um, but before we start talking about all things podcasting marketing and growing your audience give us a bit of a snapshot of your background how did you get to where you are today how did you get into the podcast hosting space what were some of the pivotal moments in that journey jurgen it was a a catastrophe coming that had me shift into this for example, I've been in lead generation and marketing for for decades now, it seems. I've written a couple of books on it. And I had my own company in 2007, doing well, helping you know companies and businesses make a lot of money with lead generation and marketing and so forth. And in that seven years I had my own company, I, the industry was beset with major in, with major changes, federal regulations, new protocols, and so forth. Four major regulations that basically impacted my business so much it brought everything down to zero. I'll give you a very simple example, case in point. I had multiple clients. One particular client, I was doing over a million dollars a year in sales. And one day, on a Monday morning, they canceled. Well, why? What happened? Well, it seems, Jürgen, that a federal regulation came down, the attorneys got together, they debated over it, and they realized, the attorneys, that they that their company could no longer accept marketing services the way that they were, that they had to retool, so they put everything on pause indefinitely. And I've had four of these changes that just would bring my business down, and I got really tired of it, Jürgen, and I And I just kept looking for what could I do that I could control? What can I control? And I kept looking. And that's the toughest question I've been looking for for a while. And then I kept hearing this word, Jürgen, podcast. What's that? And when I found out what it was, it was like, hey, I can do this. I'm Italian. I can talk. So so I I dug into both feet, jumped into, into it with both feet. I studied everything I could on the internet. I think I did that for about two months, studied and everything and everything that I could. And back then there were podcasts on how to podcast. And mm-hmm. it took a long time to listen to them and so forth. And I got myself a mentor. I highly recommend to every single entrepreneur and small business and business owner out there in the audience, get a mentor to help you get through the rocks and shoals that are in the, in the way of your business that you may not see. So I got myself a world class a world class radio announcer Michael Benner who's who's a who's who in Southern California and I got him to mentor me and train me on how to how to radio. And I took that and I started live one hour blog talk radio and I just jumped in, you know, I did the Italian thing and I just just jumped and started and learned so many things from the actual practice. Mm. And that was nice, Jurgen. But then it was like, well, how do people know you're there? Well, you could have a great product or even an okay product. It still is not going to sell or go anywhere unless people know that it's there. And that's where my marketing and lead generation skills came in handy. And so, if you want me to go on, so I started and then I, I developed and created this show called Revenue Chat Radio. That was fall 2015. 
And I just marketed and promoted my brains out. Probably easily 80% of my time was promoting my shows, letting people know it's there, expanding my social media, and just pushing it out there and putting it out there and putting it out there. And in my first year, Jurgen, I got 500,000 downloads. Mm, that's impressive. And then in my second year, I started and joined with Voice America Influencers Channel. And in, I think within six months or something like that, I became their number one show on that channel. And it's, you know, history from there. I just kept growing and growing. And then last year, I merged both of my giant shows into one big show. And that became, that grew, I guess it's it's the inertia that grew even more. And now I'm hitting 60, 70,000 downloads per episode. And by the end of this year, I do I do intend to have 100,000. Hmm. So you're still spending that time on the marketing of the show? Not so much 80%. I now have VAs that do things for me. I set the actions. I know and I can jump in at any time and do anything. I have people now do this, do that, produce the show, do the newsletter, put the show on on social media, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. So I now have that really well organized. And I was just noticing this the other day recently that I went from six days a week at the beginning to now it's like a part-time job and it's a huge show that just gets a lot of downloads. But that's from the little baby steps, you know, the way in the audience out there, the way you get to the fifth floor of your building, aside from the obvious, well, there's an elevator, is you have to go through the first floor. You have to go through the second floor. You have to go through the third floor. You have to take those steps. And now that I've taken all those steps and I teach people how to build a world-class podcast, one of my students got 100,000 downloads in just a couple of months following my procedures. So I've learned these steps, what to do, what not to do, and I teach others. And it's these steps, Jurgen, that once it's going like, here's a case in point, a car, when your car is on the freeway doing in the U.S. 60 miles an hour, it doesn't need that much gas or effort to go 70. But when you're first starting out, you're in first gear, it takes more. So my car, my show is now very fast on the highway. So it's it becomes in a way easier and easier to get more audience because I have so much momentum going. So it wasn't always that way, but yes, now it is a part-time job, whereas before it was, you know, a full-time and a half job. Hmm. Yeah, well, there's so much in that I like, and I think, you know, I love your analogy of um, walking up the stairs and you have to get to the first floor for, before you get to the second floor and so on. But sadly, I think people believe in Star Trek and think they can beam themselves up to that top floor without doing all the work in the meantime you know I was having a chat to somebody yesterday and we were talking about magic pills and uh, the internet seems to have uh, kind of promoted this belief that there's a magic pill and a shortcut to everything and of course there isn't you know what let's t let's go back and and let's add in elevators even if you take an elevator and an express elevator which would be akin to having a mentor like if if mm. someone does podcasting on their own, they could take, I don't know how long, but let's just say I or another podcast expert mentored them. They would go a lot faster. So that mentor is like taking an elevator, but you still got to go through the th first floor. The elevator still has to go through the second floor. The elevator still has to go through the third floor and so forth. And it, it, you can go faster. And as you said, you're absolutely right. I've interviewed hundreds and hundreds of bright, bright, successful entrepreneurs, Russell Brunson, John Lee Dumas, Jeff Hoffman, you've interviewed him as well, Frank Shankwitz, Kevin Harrington. And I can tell you that every single person had to deal with some difficulties. They had issues. I've interviewed someone who was homeless, living on the street, Jurgen, and he became a millionaire. They're, they're, it's not easy, though, you know, people like you and I, we could go on stage and make it sound easy. But there's so much work into 
behind the scenes, what we've done that, yeah, I can talk about and say, do this, do that, do this. I've been there, done that. And I can rebuild and create a new show in, in moments that will be just dynamite. There's no question about it. But it's all that experience. And, you know, when I'm on stage, I talk about one of the world's greatest achievements, the biggest, giant, tallest piece of rock on earth that people have climbed, Mount Everest. It's over 29,000 feet. It's, that's over five miles. And, you know, for decades, people tried to climb it and they died, unfortunately. History has it recorded 300 people died trying to climb Mount Everest. And they spent money doing it. And it wasn't until May 1953, I believe, Sir Edmund, Sir Hillary. Tim Norgay, yeah. and Edmund, yeah. Percival, Hillary. Hil Hillary, there you go. They climbed yeah. it. And you know what happened? They showed the world, hey, it can be done. You can do it. Get a guide, right? Get a mentor. Mm. And after that, 4,000 people plus. Now there's a big line. Now it's like they're standing That's right. Yeah. People are in line trying to get up there. But that wasn't so decades before. That just shows it can be done. So that's the key thing is when you get a mentor or something, you know that <clears throat> you know that it can be done. And you know that the mentor, you know, for example, in climbing the mountain, I wasn't there. But, you know, it's like, OK, bunk down here at noon because there's a big storm that's going to come in in the afternoon. It's going to push everyone off the mountains, wait for the storm, climb up beyond that point. Don't go this way because that's a dead end. Don't go this other way because that's a sheer fall. It's too icy. They know these things. And the mountain climber doesn't necessarily know these points without that guide. That guide takes them through safely. That is the biggest thing. And yeah, it makes it look like there's a magic bullet. And I consider the magic bullet the be having a mentor. Mm hmm. Yeah, there's great advice in that. And and as you say, it certainly can shortcut things. Now, I'm, I'm fascinated. I know, you know, I'll, I'll talk to you a little bit about your system and process that you have in place, because obviously, as a mentor for other podcasters, you would have documented things that you've learned and done, and also for your team to be able to do what they do. Um, I'd like to go back to the beginning, though. When you first started, how did you get um, good quality guests onto the podcast? And how did you get to the point now where you're in interviewing the people that you mentioned, people you know that are famous and probably really time poor and don't go on every podcast? Great question, Jurgen. You, when I started, I had zero audience and I knew zero people that I interviewed because I came from a different industry into podcasting. What I did, and I recommend to anyone that wants to have a good podcast, do what I did. Go on social media and start looking at at people that are putting out wise posts, good posts, good information, good data about your subject that you like and keep watching social media. That's what I did. And I started creating a list of people that were saying and resonating with me that were perfect for my show. And I started inviting them to my show and everyone that I invited said yes. And so I started bringing on immediately great Yes, for example, Dov Barron, who is the Canadian equivalent of Tony Robbins. He's been on my show and so forth. And I just started getting great guests just immediately. And now it's I, I've changed my system because my guest list was over a year and a half. It was just way too long. I stopped I stopped booking people for about six months. And I'm mm -hmm. still waiting to bring that list down because right now someone that comes on my show isn't going to get aired till probably end of 2020 or beginning 2021. So I'm rechanging my system now. I'm going to bring you on a lot sooner, Jurgen. And I'm in flux. And if everyone just hangs on, I want to interview everyone. That's my passion. I know you, we haven't gone into that question yet. But that's it is just so great. You know, when you get into something that you like, that you love, it's it just flows. And for me, podcasting, it just flows. It's like you know, skating on ice with the ice skates, you know, it's great. Yeah, yeah. Well, you talked earlier about the value of having a, a good mentor. And I find for me, the podcast, I mean, for me personally, it's like having an hour's masterclass with an expert every time. And if I do a, a podcast like this one we're doing 
early morning my time. For the rest of the day, I'm on a real high just having had that conversation and having learned some new things out of the podcast. And then the other thing that I love about it is that I get to share this with my audience. And I'll share it with mine as well. I have a lot of podcasters in my audience. And when I go over things like this, I'll either reinforce something that's very important or I'll wind up giving more information on something. And it's, you know, Blueberry reports, by the way, 75% of podcasters last year, podcasts are no longer in production now. And now you're going, there's this term called pod fade. They actually, yeah. Someone made a word out of it. Mm. The average podcaster, what, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 episodes and they stop. Well, th- I've learned and cracked that nut on how to get and make a show successful, how to monetize it, how to make it into a living. And that's what has me so passionate about podcasting, Jurgen. And I love talking about this subject because I write my own ticket. I interview when I want, take uh, take breaks, take take trips with the family whenever I want. It's amazing. And it's taken some time to get to this. It's not first day. Mm. But once you get once you get past the hump, so to speak, it's just amazing because you can write your own ticket. Mm, that's right. And and particularly when you get to that point of you've got a long uh, list of people lined up to interview and then you can schedule those out months in advance if that's a really long list like you were saying. And then once you've done those interviews, you've got all that time to basically sit back and relax while the um, time catches up with the episodes you've got recorded, so to speak. It's very true. And that really is how it happens. And it takes a lot of hard work in the beginning. I did work night and day at the very beginning and put it in. So you, it, it doesn't come easy, folks. You have to put in the work. But if you put in the work and if you do the right steps, especially get a mentor, it will get easier and easier. And, you know, Jurgen, there are so many subjects. There are so many topics. There are so many categories that it's not it's not a full world full world in that there's so much room for every single person to podcast and with especially with so many people unfortunately not podcasting i know two people personally that have podcasted for two years plus and they stopped because they couldn't monetize it Hmm. so once you can get past this hump it's just so nice so you just have to really keep at it and and, and, and along with your show, because you focus on innovation, every single person, you have a you have a passion. You have something that you'll get up every day and you're happy to talk about it because it's your passion. For me, that's podcasting. For someone, it could be photography. It could be animals. It could be dogs. It could be flowers. That's your passion. Yes, you can podcast about that. Flowers, animals, nature. If you'll get up, if you get up every day and you like that and you want to talk about it, podcast it, start it. And because every single person is unique, I believe, this is my theory, Tony's theory here, that you don't have to worry about innovating because every person has such a unique way of looking at things. When a person comes out with a podcast, their style is so unique. I haven't heard two podcasters the same way yet. They're all different. They all have their own little style because that's the way they like to do it. So I believe, again, Tony's theory, that innovation automatically is there because you're going along with something you like, with something you love, and you're going to share that with the world the way you like, the way you love. And you can call it innovation, but you're going to wind up being different and being and standing up, standing apart, standing out from the rest because of your unique point of view. Mm, yeah, there's there's a lot of great advice in that. Um, beginning with, you know, if you have a passion, if you you're driven to do something that you really love every day, then sharing that with the world through a podcast is really a great way to contribute. And you know, we'll talk about monetization in a moment, but then putting your unique spin on that or your unique um, presentation style on that will resonate with some people it won't resonate with everybody but as you say it's um, there's going to be so many differences and 
innovation in what you do. So Absolutely. I love that. Well said, mm. yes. Now, I'll ask you about monetization. Um, what, what are some of the ways to make money from your podcast? Because the traditional thing is people think that oh, we'll, we'll just get some sponsors on board and, and maybe if you've got um, 6 million downloads like you have, then you will get sponsors on board. Uh, but it, I think it's a bit unrealistic for people that might have, I don't know, a 1,000 or 10,000 downloads that they'll get a lot of sponsorship money on board. So what, what are some of the approaches that you suggest to monetize a podcast? Jurgen, first, by the way, I uh, thank you. I'm not at six million yet. I'm around four right. and a half million <laughs> plus or minus, but soon, very soon, who knows? Next it's month, a vision. Right? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you're you're foretelling the future here. <laughs> there are several categories to monetization, and that's a very big question for this interview. There's a lot that I could go, and I will try to touch on most items very quickly. First, there are there are companies, a lot of them, and it's growing, who advertise on billboards, radio, TV, magazines, and so forth right now. Podcasts are now growing, and they have the attention of the bigger companies. Now, there's thousands and thousands of podcasters, so a company doesn't necessarily go out to individual podcasters. They'll go to an agency to represent them. And, and help them spend their marketing money wisely and put, and put them on billboards, put them on buses, put them on whatever their marketing plan is, put them on podcasts. So these agencies will go and seek other agencies that have and control podcasts and that already have sifted through what's good, what's not, and, and they'll test different shows. Now, the dividing line, we're told by some companies that they'll take on podcasters that do as little as 5,000 downloads. I have found in reality that it's more like 10,000 or more. And if you have that 10,000, 15, 20,000 downloads per episode, I know I can hand hold you. That's not correct grammar. I can, I can directly refer you to companies that are looking for good podcasters that have a lot of downloads. And if you don't have those downloads, but you have some marketing budget, I know where you can go to get more promotion that will bring you a lot of bang for the buck, so to speak, and bring you a lot more people because I used to do promotions and marketing for, for many years. I know where to go to promote because face it, you could have a great podcast we talked about earlier, or even an okay podcast or whatever. But if nobody knows about it, there's nothing more that to be said. And that's why mm. I believe, I believe, I'm not positive, but that's why I believe 75% of podcasters just kind of fade away after a while. So you have to know where to go to promote so that you you know how to wisely spend your money. And I know those things. Now, agencies are one thing, and you can and may find an agency that will promote and put sponsors on you if you have a small show. But if you are looking to monetize and make it a business, get yourself over 10,000 downloads per episode and get into a bigger show. Now, that's one way is to find these agencies. They're out there. And I have in the past gone to a lot of these agencies, Jurgen, and surprise, 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 they're booked. They're not taking any new podcasters. Hmm. I... I had to search very hard to find an agency that had room to include my podcast. It was very interesting. So it's not necessarily the fast way for someone who is new at this, especially starting off. So that's one way. Now, another way, and this is how I got my biggest client. The most money I've made is by the following. When you get emails in your email box, no matter what it is, if it's something that you think you would, would, wouldn't would mind promoting on your show, don't delete that email. Send them, send them a reply that you've got a show, a little bit about your show, what kind of downloads, demographics, and so forth, and pitch them. And I've gotten my biggest client from just pitching back. Why? Well, 
look at it this way. You've, there's this brand, ABC brand, and they're sending out emails. Well, they've bought onto somebody's list. They're emailing people. They've got money. They're promoting their item. They want people to know about their item. Well, that's perfect. If I say, hey, I can take your item and promote it and get it to tens of thousands of people, they listen, Jurgen, because this is what they want. So don't delete your spam. Take a look and say, well, could I do a commercial on this? Would I be willing to represent this on my show? Is this a fit for my show? And if so, go back to them because they're actively promoting. That's a hmm. really good way of doing it. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great tip. Thank you. And then there are other there are other methods. I taught someone very quickly who went out and she looked around at what she was using at her studio and she reached out to a company because she was using their equipment and she said, Hey, I love your equipment, blah, 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 blah. I have a podcast. It'd be great to talk about it. Next thing you know, she got a contract to represent them. So, so look around your office, look around just what you use. You know, do you use someone's accounting software? Do you use banking software? What do you use? Your various apps that you like. If you have this good emotion with that product, reach out to them, whether even clothes. Like I've reached out to some people, some clothing manufacturers. I, I'm getting emails to buy suits and this, and I send back, say, hey, you know, I would love to represent you, you know. Mm -hmm. So look around what you have that you would love and then reach out to them and I think I've helped somebody else out do the same thing, just looking around something that resonates with you. So don't overlook your normal items. Mm. Yeah, there's some great tips there. There's, and it's like with a lot of other things, there's everyday things around us that we take for granted and they're actually opportunities disguised in some other form, right? Yes. Hmm. And, and you may reach out to some that are on the edge that you may not be the right audience for, but, but you have to keep pushing. You have to keep putting it out there and you have to keep promoting until someone else does it for you that brings in the bucks. You, as the podcast host, you have to keep marketing your own show and pitching for business. It did not come right away. It took time, but now it's, it's rolling very, very well. And I make, I make, I make, I do very well. Each of my shows does in the four to five digits per episode based on sponsor revenue. It's, it's going very well. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's really impressive. Um, now, a couple of other things I wanted to explore with you, certainly the idea of the vision map. So one of your books, so you've written a couple of books. Um, one's called The elite entrepreneurs and the other one is the vision map now i'm fascinated by the vision map because i know this is what you kind of use to build the podcast from scratch and it's i think it's a really good model for people who are starting any venture so tell us a little bit how that works well, thank you so much for asking, Jurgen. I truly appreciate that. Yes, I did create and put together the vision map. I've been in university and college. I've I've graduated with with great distinction. I've learned a lot of marketing on the job, in training, reading books. I get mentored two to three hours a week. It's just a great pool of wealth. And I've taken that and distilled key information. I've created this called the vision map, M-A-P. And just like you need a map to go somewhere on vacation or you need a map on a journey, this is a map for you to achieve your vision. And it starts with what is your vision? And in my book, uh, I have an ebook that you can all get. Go to Tony, D-U-R-S-O.com, get the ebook. And then there's an audio and then there's a training. In the training, I show what my vision, my purpose, my objective, and I show how I actually podcast, but that's, that's getting ahead of myself. The vision map, Jurgen, you start with the vision. What do you see yourself doing a couple years from in the future? Now, I originally started with a three to five year plan and I accomplished my, my vision. I accomplished everything in about two years, 
So now I say when I, t- so now I talk about and say, well, just make it a couple year plan. Where do you see yourself? It, if I was on stage, you'd see me walk to the left, turn around and look back to the right. For example, you're, you're taking yourself in the future, a couple of years, you're turning around and you're looking back and you go, what do I see myself doing D as with a D in David, what am I doing? I'm doing this. I'm, I'm lecturing. I'm writing courses. I'm, I'm speaking. What is it that you see yourself doing about this passion, this love, this, or it could be podcasting. What is it that you see? And so that's the top line. That's vision. Well, underneath is your purpose. I, I like to say purpose is be, as in boy, being. What are you being? What do you see yourself? Why do you do it? What makes you get up in the morning to do that? And that will accomplish that vision. So you write down your purpose, why you're doing it. What's your reason for doing it? Underneath that, I call it the long-term objective. And this is H. This is having. This is what do you see yourself accomplishing? This is something that's done. What did you accomplish two, three years in the future when you're looking back. Now, there are a great many bright people out there, Jurgen, that have a great definition for goal. But if I said goal, we could think it's something you do in one day, one week, Hmm. one month, couple months, a year, or a ball in a net. It's so many great definitions. So I call it a long-term objective so that you don't immediately think of other people's definitions for this exercise. So what do you see yourself accomplishing in a couple of years? That's the long-term objective. And I trained this really thoroughly. I'm going to give you the next step, but give you an example. I took a student who was selling five items a month on Amazon, a health product, all right? Five a month, Amazon health product. Within, I think, two months, between two and three months of just only training him on the vision map, because it's, it's, it's a, It's a very detailed exercise. Within two to three months, he was selling 12 items a day on Amazon. This Mm -hmm. is what happened as a result of the vision map. This is how powerful it is. So you know the words and, you know, but you also know salt, sugar, water, eggs, flour. You know those words too, but that doesn't necessarily make you a great chef. So. The vision map really shows how to do it, and it takes time. It's not done some. It's not done in a day. It's it's a labor of love. But once you do it, it just zooms. All right. So we talked about the long term objective. Well, underneath that, now what is it that you're going to need to take and put that objective into action? How are you going to materialize? How are you going to have these things in the next two to three years? Well, you need a master plan. And the master plan has two components, a strategy and a tactical plan. Strategy, you know, in the military sense, let's just let's just say, you know, if you took a certain hill, you'd be able to handle the enemy or keep them at bay. Well, that might be the strategy, take the hill. The tactical is how do we take mm. the hill? How do you corner the market? How do you g- become a prominent podcaster or in the top 100 on iTunes or whatever. How do you do that? So it again requires a lot of thought on your strategy and your tactical and you roll up your sleeves and you work that all out. And then there's something called 30, 60, 90, which isn't in the book, but that's how you can make immediate money right now by what is it that you're going to do right now that's on your tactical that will bring you income and how do you for new endeavors, this is perfect. How do you monetize that? And you start working that out. And then all the way, it's this big inverted V, Jurgen, at the very bottom, at the point, is the things to do. What am I going to do today that's on my 30, 60, 90 that gets me immediate income, that's on my tactical plan, et cetera, et cetera. And it's all apples and apples and apples, so to speak. It's not, I'm going to buy a house or I'm going to take a vacation. No, it's, I'm going to podcast and this is my purpose and this is my vision, or I'm going to start a new business or I'm going to create a new app, et cetera. And in my training, I talk about not only how to podcast, I also take a fictitious item of creating a, an app and how to corner the market with an app and how to do it. And I, we talk about that and t- just to give you ideas and examples, you know, so that hopefully you can u- know how to use this to fit in whatever you want to do. That vision map is absolutely amazing. 
Now, I have the book, which is being turned into a full-length 200, 250-page book at some point in the future. Then I have an audio reading, which I give more information than in the book. And then I have a video training where I give even more information. Highly recommend. Get that. Go to TonyDURSO.com. Get this. And you're going to spend some time with it, but it's time well spent. And Mm. there's a gentleman called Jordan Adler. Jordan Adler was... You could you would consider a failure at one point in his life. No job, no house, no girlfriend, no life, just not not a very happy. And he did a brilliant and smart thing, Jurgen. He went off and he worked out his vision. And he spent a good part of the afternoon, if not all afternoon, on it. What did he see himself doing a couple years? And he wrote out almost like a wish. And he looked at it every day, and he looked at it every day, and after a while, he forgot all about it. Well, fast forward, sometime later, Jordan Adler was moving. And he, he, in the move process, he found that list, and he started reading it. But he couldn't finish reading it, Jurgen. He couldn't finish. He got down, and he started crying because he had accomplished his vision. He, he was moving into a brand new house. He had the best job he could ever imagine. He had a, a great girlfriend. His life was amazing. And at that time, Jurgen, Jordan Adler was making $100,000 a month. And to the audience, if you want to get his book, he's got a couple of books on him. The one I read was Beach Money. And if, I may say, if an author does a book in his own voice, does the audio reading, Get it, get it, get it. Do all three things because you hear their inflection. You hear what they have to say. Sometimes they throw in additional information like I did and you get a lot more out of it. So when an author does an audio reading of the book, buy it, Mm. get it, read it and enjoy it. And that is just absolutely amazing. And I'm going to be interviewing. I've been talking about Jordan Adler on stage for over three and a half years on my shows. It's in my vision map somewhere. And I'm going to actually be interviewing him shortly. <laughs> he, he doesn't know, but I've sold so many of his books. <laughs> <laughs> so it's time you came on the show. Yeah. No, I love that story. And I, um, I love the idea of you know, looking seriously to get the books that are read by the author, because I can imagine, particularly in that example, that, you know, the emotion that he felt when he discovered that vision map in the in the move that, you know, that's that's going to come across so strongly when he reads it personally, because you probably hear that in his voice. Absolutely correct. It was Hmm. so amazing. And it's such a great book. He talks about three month goals and so many other things in that book, just absolutely love that book and uh i can't wait to get him on my show hmm. yeah well I'll look forward to hearing that and i must go and get a hold of the book as well i i really love that vision map exercise and and we've um we have a an annual retreat with a bunch of small businesses where we go through a similar kind of exercise and it it is just so powerful to do that and do it from the big picture scenario first where do you see yourself in you know 12 months in three years we we kind of do three years at the moment um, and then back to one year and then come down that um, inverted pyramid to build a detailed 12-month action plan and the beauty one of the things that I think is the beauty of this is I tend to get distracted. I like variety, so I kind of get distracted by every shiny little toy that comes my way. And you know, on, on the internet, there's a lot of those. Um, but to have your vision front of mind um, helps you focus on the things that need to get done to achieve the outcomes that you want. And and it helps me say, well, hang on, this is a distraction strategy I'm doing now. It doesn't fit in with my vision, so back on track. And another thing, if you follow my example on how to work your daily list and work your daily items, you don't get so distracted. And mm-hmm. the answer is in my video on that, on how to actually do it. But you you wind up getting so focused 
it becomes like a laser to get your stuff done. And it, there, I have a system on how to do it, a hard one system, and I talk about it on my video. All right. Well, we'll we'll have links to that in the show notes, including some of the other things that you've shared with us, and hopefully that'll give a lot of really valuable tips and elaborate on all the valuable tips you've already given us. Now I could go on talking to you for ages, Tony, but I'm aware of the time and I think it's a good point to move on to the buzz, which is our innovation round. And it's designed to help our audience who are primarily innovators and leaders in their field with some tips from your experience with answers to five questions that I ask every guest on the podcast. And hopefully we'll get some really insightful answers today that are going to inspire the audience to go and do something awesome. I'd be glad to. Just let me know if you want short answers or long answers, because yeah. I, 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 I can talk. <laughs> okay. Well, well, we'll go for short answers, but I might follow up and, and get you to elaborate a little bit more. So what do you All think right. is the number one thing anyone needs to do to be more innovative? Jürgen, the number one thing that everyone that listening to this needs to do to be more innovative is this. You either work a job that someone dictates to you what to do, or you work on your passion, even if it's nights and weekends, and you make that unique to your specific prefer preferences. Innovating is easy. We talked about that earlier because every single person has their own point of view, and you are going to talk about flowers different than someone else is going to talk about flowers who's different than someone else is going to work flowers. Some will sell baskets or some will sell seeds. Some will make beautiful uh, bouquets, et cetera, et cetera. But it's all flowers. So there's so many different ways on it. Hmm. That's great. So put your spin on things. And, and I guess part of that is have the confidence to actually do your own thing. Right. And you'll find that you're automatically innovating. You don't I believe this is Tony's theory. I think I mentioned it earlier. <laughs> I don't go out and go, how do I innovate on this? I just go with something and this is how I like to do it because I like it this way. And it turns out to be un unique enough to make it stand out. Hmm. All right. What's the best thing you've done to develop new ideas? The best thing that I've done to develop new ideas, Jürgen, I say that necessity requires that of us. For example, when you have no choice, when you just have no choice and you need to do something successful that puts food on the table, you rise above the barriers. This is what I did with podcasting. I was hacked. I was shut down. Everything was deleted. Some people just or person sh took everything away from me. Hmm. I almost left. I, I, I actually contemplated leaving. But that necessity and because the fact that I had re that I had built my shows got me to rebuild, bring it back up, and keep it going. So necessity will require that, and you've just got to rise above the barriers. Hmm. Yeah, that's great. Um, great inspiration. Um, do you have a favorite resource that you use most often? Yes, my favorite resource is Fiverr. I use them for technical services, to make banners, even virtual assistants. I do everything with Fiverr. I find it very easy. You just find the people that are the highest rated or in that category. And regardless of the price, you know that they've done, they can do, they can perform. They've got a lot of reviews and that's my advice on using Fiverr. Don't necessarily go to people that have no reviews or one or two or three rev reviews because those reviews are usually just their friends to get them going. Mm. But find those that can really do a good job. And I have gold nuggets of people that have that do work for me year in, year out, and they're so good. And I found them all on Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R-R. -R. Yeah, yeah, that is a really good resource. And, and your advice is fabulous. Check out the reviews they have and also read their profile because I've found looking through different people's profiles there might be a, a number of people that have really good reviews but um, when I read their profile there's there's one person that kind of stands out because it's somehow their profile and their experience and and the way they express themselves just speaks to me so I, I can relate to them um, much better than say one or two others that that might also have a good reviews so i think that's that's something to consider as well 
All right. What's there the best way to keep a client on track? I, with the way I work, I don't quite have that type of system. But when I was in corporate America, I use a spreadsheet. And in my video, I have a better way to do it. But I use a spreadsheet. Everything that I have to accomplish. Now, I do use a spreadsheet for every single show that I produce because I have to, you know, send it to the client, send it to any public relation people, send it to social media, you know, send it to my tech guy, et cetera. So I have everything on a spreadsheet and my goal is just go boom, boom, boom. And I do that before the show and I do it after the show. And I just, within, within an hour, if, of my show being broadcast, everything is all the, all the orders or requests are issued. Everything rolls just boom. And that's it. I'm done. It's Mm. just that fast, but it's all on a spreadsheet. Yeah. And you have a really good system by the sound of it. Yeah. Mm. I've got a good team. I built my team through the school of hard knocks. (laughs) All right. Now we've talked about this a little bit, um, a lot, actually. What, what's the number one thing you think anyone can do to differentiate themselves? Tony's theory on this one, Jurgen, is do something the way you like to do it and not anyone else, and you will find that your product becomes unique that way. It's the way you look at it, and every single person on this earth has a different way of looking at something that they love. And and it's just so amazing that everyone just does it a little different. So make it make it that way, and people will that resonate with your passion will love what you do. Hmm. Yeah, that's great advice. And and I think the other thing that, you know, some people lack the confidence to put themselves out there. And I was having a conversation a week ago with um, Anna Sui, who's a mindset coach. And what what she suggested was, you know, if, if you've got this unique gift and unique way of looking at what you're passionate about, then sharing it with others is almost, it, it's like your obligation to the world. It's your contribution. And you'd be very selfish if you didn't share that. Exactly. Hmm. All right. Well, thanks, Tony. This has been really fabulous. You've already given us some, some links. So um, where can people reach out to you to learn more about Tony Dirso and the Tony Dirso show and even get in touch and say thank you for what you've shared today? You can reach me, you can listen to my shows, you can get the vision map, you can read about my life in, in Chicago when I grew up, et cetera, et cetera, all at TonyDURSO.com. Just look at the nav bar for the links. You can even get interviewed with me. Just go to TonyDURSO.com, look for the link on the on the top nav bar, follow, follow it, and you'll be able to communicate, email me, set an appointment with me. I'm I'm very approachable, and all my social media is there too. All the key social media. Hmm. All right. Well, that's fabulous. We'll have links to that on the show notes so that people can just click straight through and learn more. Now, two more questions before we wrap up, Tony. What's the number one piece of advice you'd give to any business owner who wants to be a leader in their field and in innovation? Read and do and perform the vision map. I think that that would be the key thing because you set your vision, your purpose, your long-term objective, you work it all out. If you want to be innovative, if you want to rock in your, in your industry in just a couple years, I know it can be done because I did it and I wrote and put this whole methodology together. I, that would be the key thing. Uh, aside from that, I can answer a specific question, but what it's been a labor of love for me, the vision map, and it's so effective. Everyone that I've trained on it is doing so well. It's it's just a no brainer. If you want to if you want to go from the first floor to the second floor, or the tenth floor to the penthouse, go from seven digits to eight digits, wherever you're at, this will definitely help take you up. I I cannot stress it enough. Yeah, I'm a little biased, but I created it. But just, <laughs> but yeah. you know, to everyone in the audience, if you have a baby, if you built a car, if you built something out of wood. If you've constructed anything, if you've planted anything and watch it grow, you know what I talk about when you when you create something with your own hands and you see it grow and be successful. There's a certain pride and enjoyment that nothing can shake. Mm. Yeah. And and certainly as somebody that that's done vision mapping in 
probably a slightly different form than you because we have talked about uniqueness, but um, I think the principle is really sound and certainly I'd encourage people to take a look at Tony's book, which you can download for free, as he said, from his website. So thanks for sharing that, Tony. Now, finally, who would you like me to interview on a future Nova Buzz podcast and why? Well, Jürgen, I've interviewed some 500 great, successful, amazing people. I think you should interview all of them. <laughs> okay. Well, that'll keep me going for a while. <laughs> it, every single one of my guests has been just great and sharing their wisdom and how they became successful in their field. And you've interviewed Neil Sperling and you've got Vince Baera coming and so, and you and I love you've already interviewed Jeff Hoffman, Michael Gerber. One of my dear a very successful entrepreneur out here his name is Jonathan Colbert, C O L B E R T. Absolutely would love to see he has his own show What's Your Holistic Lifestyle and I believe he would be fantastic for an interview with you. All right. Well, we might uh, get an introduction to Jonathan and invite him to the podcast, but we'll certainly go through your list of 500 guests and see who else we might <laughs> bring on the show. <laughs> That'll give that me sounds a, great. a big directory. <laughs> so thanks there for that. Go. My pleasure. And, and thanks so much for sharing your time and insights with us so generously today, Tony. I really appreciate you coming on to the Innova Buzz podcast. I know you're a busy man. And you've done a lot, but I really appreciate you sharing your passion for podcasting and vision mapping with us today. I wish you all the best for the future, and let's keep in touch. Jürgen, the honor and pleasure is mine. Thank you so much for having me on Innova Buzz. I love it. This is a great interview, and I really do sincerely hope that I've given some insights to everyone in your audience to do better and be more successful. I really hope so. Hmm. Yeah, and the challenge, of course, is go out and take action on those things. Yes. I hope you enjoyed that engaging, insightful and informative conversation with Tony and took something away from this episode. I love the ideas he shared about growing your guest list for your podcast and how to approach possible sponsors – opportunities that may not at first sight be obvious. I'd love to know what you took away from Tony's episode. Leave a comment below the blog post, which you can find at innovabiz.co forward slash Tony Dirso. That is T-O-N-Y-D-U-R-S-O. -O. All one word, all lowercase, innovabiz.co forward slash Tony Dirso. You'll also find contact information for getting in touch with Tony there, as well as links to his website, his social media pages, and the Vision Mac book that he's offered to share with us so generously, as well as the other resources we spoke about in our conversation. Tony suggested we interview Jonathan Colbert of Create Your Holistic Lifestyle and host of the podcast with the same name on a future Innova Buzz podcast. So Jonathan, keep an eye on your inbox for an invitation from us to the Innova Buzz podcast, courtesy of Tony Dierso. Remember to check out our Marketing Master mini class at innovabiz.co forward slash marketing master. It is completely free and accessible without even giving away your email. In less than 30 minutes, you'll gain clarity about your ideal client and how you can communicate with them to build and strengthen an engaging, enduring relationship. Isn't that what marketing is about? And if you'd like our help to go even deeper into marketing mastery or our help with podcast production, then send me an email to jurgen at innovabiz.co, that's J-U-R-G-E-N, at innovabiz.co and we'll set up a quick call to see if we're a good fit for one another. Tune in again next week to the Innova Buzz podcast. We've got some more fantastic guests lined up, including David Smulders of BitQ and Dr. Amantha Imber of Inventium. 
Stay connected with us by subscribing to the Innova Buzz podcast at innovabuzz.com forward slash subscribe. I-N-N-O-V-A-B-U-Z-Z dot com forward slash subscribe. Make sure you never miss another episode. It would also mean a lot to me if you leave us a review because what you think matters. I'd love to hear your thoughts, your ideas, your suggestions or questions you have, so go ahead and share them in the comments below the blog post for this episode. Until next time, I'm Jürgen Strauss from InnovaBiz. Remember, be awesome and keep innovating.